Hey guys, this is Jeremy with Trek Parents here to uh, do an initial setup and gear review of the Warbonnet Ridge Runner. Uh, I just got it in a couple days ago. I did pull it out of my house and take a look at it, but I have not um, really set it up yet. So I wanted to do my first setup with you. Um, and before we get set up, you know, the Ridge Runner hammock is a bridge style hammock, so you do get um, tent posts and stakes with it. I watched a couple of the videos online about setting up the hammock before I actually came out here and did it. And it looked like there was a little bit of confusion on the poles, but I think that they may have since changed that. There's a, there's a long pole for the head end, there's a short pole for the foot end, and um, the long pole for the head end is a three-piece pole set, and the short end is not. And it looked like they were made of the same size tube. Um, but now it seems that the, the foot end looks to be about three eighths and the head end looks to be about half inch. So it's, it's easy to see what pieces go where without really having to do much digging. Um, another thing that I need to investigate is that you can substitute your hiking poles for these poles, um, which is something I'm very interested in because I'm always trying to keep my pack weight down. Um, when I'm choosing gear, I don't just go based on pack weight. Um, I do go on comfort, weight, and compressibility. So if my weight is a little high, I want my compressibility to be there um, so I can justify um, a smaller pack. Um, but in this case, I would really like to see if I could just use my trek poles. The one thing I will say about the bridge hammock before I get started is I have a uh, Warbonnet Blackbird XLC. And when I bought that, I decided to go with the 1.7 double layer. Um, that hammock was rather large and the compressibility of 1.7 uh, fabric versus 1.1 is not that great. Uh, so that was that was something that discouraged me just because I'm a, I'm a backpacker. Uh, had nothing to do with the hammock, it was just really the compressibility. The Ridge Runner, or the, I'm sorry, the Ridge Runner, hammock is made out of 1.1 so I did opt to go with the double layer again um, and it also adds 15 or uh, 50 pounds to the holding capacity I think it goes from 200 to 250 so let's go ahead and get set up Okay, you can see I got it all set up. Um, I went with the webbing uh, suspension instead of the whoopee sling, so it sets up almost exactly like the, uh, the Blackbird. Um, the only difference is, is that you have some am steel coming off of either corner running up to your webbing and, uh, and then the webbing going out to the tree. Um, after I opened the pack, I noticed that they had supplied this little bag of cord. Um, I did email Warbond and ask what this was for. These are actually little drip strips to tie to the am steel on all four ends to uh, to keep any rain from getting into the hammock. So if you're not familiar with these all you got to do is tie a little piece of string and water will take the path of least resistance. It'll hit the string and run straight to the ground instead of coming into your hammock. <laughs> um, some of the other things, there are these big pockets, they're on both sides. It goes from a larger contour down to a smaller contour, they're calling these saddlebags. These are really nice. Um, there's one on either end. I noticed there's, there's a pocket or a pouch here at the hood end, or at the head end rather, and there's a little drawstring and I believe that it pulls the pouch tight. Um, there are these little tie outs at the head and foot for the bug netting. This one attaches here at the uh, suspension point. This one needs to attach a little bit higher, maybe even around the tree if I were closer. 
uh, to get the uh, bug netting out of your face. This can be removed. It zips on three sides and it can be rolled up and put in this pouch here at the foot end, which I can see being nice if you're camping in the winter or fall and there's no bugs to worry about. Um, this is a completely different sleep than the Blackbird. It sleeps completely flat. Um, the one thing I noticed is I did get the double liner and the double liner is actually on the bottom outside to slip your uh, pad in, which is kind of cool because when you're sleeping in a hammock, even when you have a double liner, you're still kind of doing some adjusting. So this, when you sleep in, it spreads and it almost kind of pulls out like a like an air cot. And, uh, and then if you've got the pad underneath there, I can see it not moving at all. Um, again, on the other side, you have the same saddlebag type pocket. Uh, the spreader bars just pop into place and spread the hammock out. The overall quality is fantastic. If you've ever owned a war bonnet, um, you know that that's what they're known for their quality fabric, quality stitching, and, um, and the parts that they use, the bug netting is great. It's no CM bug netting. Um, so let's take a closer look to the actual lay inside. Uh, I think that's kind of important. I'm 6'2", and I could, I was laying completely flat out, side sleeping uh, on my arm, and it was really, really comfortable. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and get in. Six two, hundred and eighty pounds. Stability is good. You can see my feet, but I'm I'm laying completely flat. Um, here would be side sleeping. Stomach sleeping. All very comfortable. Here's that head pocket I was talking about. I guess you could throw your cell phone in here. Um, and as you can see, you can maneuver around. It does sway, but it doesn't give you that tipping feeling. Um, and inside, you just grab the, the extra material here and you just shift yourself around. So, it's pretty nice. I can spread out here completely, shoulder to shoulder. My feet aren't touching anything. Wow, this is, man, this may be better than the Blackbird. I think I like this a little better. I am a back sleeper and a side sleeper, and although I, I love my Blackbird, you do have to get that asymmetric sleeping, and when I was using an underquilt, that became a little problematic. Um, this, I don't see that issue at all. My pockets here, everything is reachable. Um, one thing that would be nice on this bug net would be a small ridge line. Um, I do like to click things up on my ridge line to hang them either by a little light or sometimes I string my clothes up over it to, uh, to air out through the night. So, but man, this thing is, whew, forget about it. Very good. Okay. Well, let's take a look at some of the features up close
And you can see I, I can swing right around and really not lose my balance at all. In and out. Good. Okay. All right, let's take a closer look at some of the features. Okay, so here you can see they've got some stiff nylon webbing that the uh, suspension is actually attached to. It's not attached to the 1.1 DIY fabric. It's attached to this hard nylon. Um, and then you can see here the AM steel is holding the suspension back up toward the tree webbing. Um, and if you're not familiar with AM steel, I did a little research on this cord. It has, um, I believe this is probably 764 AM steel and it has like a thousand pound holding capacity so that stuff is almost as strong as steel steel braid here is the uh here's the foot end tube you can see it just easily goes in there spread out and it clicks in um there is some tie straps here for when you roll the bug netting back, you could just shoelace tie it, stuff it in the pocket. Here's a uh, little draw cord for the foot end to open up the, uh, the bug netting. Uh, let's take a look at the saddlebags. Okay, so here are the saddlebags. You can kind of see this contour shape. Um, goes from a larger pocket to a smaller pocket. Um, that's pretty neat. I'm not sure really why the shape deviation, but um, this is nice maybe just for your water bottle and then some of your gear to come in here. Um, these pockets are on both ends, so it maintains stability. Here are the zippers for the, for the bug netting. And again, it's three-sided, so you can place these zippers wherever you want so that it's easy access for in and out. Here you'll notice on the suspension, they use that same D-ring design, so it bites down on the webbing, and then that amp still comes in and attaches here. So here you're getting your spread to your, to your spreader bars, and then this is the same webbing and uh, buckle configuration that they have in the others. Uh, to make adjustments, you just fold these two back, put a space in between, and then move your webbing as you see fit, or pull to tighten and it locks down on itself. Um, it does not come with uh, carabiners. You will need to supply your own. Um, but other than that, you have everything you need. Here's that small draw cord that I was talking about before. Um, you can see it doesn't run through anything, so I think it just kind of cinches that pouch up, or you could probably put the pole through and then cinch the pole in here and it keeps this head end here like this. All right, guys, so there it is, the War Bonnet uh, Ridge Runner Hammock. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out on the trail and testing it out. Um, I think it's going to... It's going to do well in my bag. It uh, compresses well. I've already tested it out. comes with your standard 1.1 um, double-sided bag that Warbond provides. And um, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you haven't seen any of my others, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I uh, try to give reviews just like I was a new person purchasing a piece of gear. And... Um, and really demonstrate the features that I would be interested in. Um, so if there's something else that you would like to see or you've got comments for me, please leave them below. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as possible. And don't forget to check us out on trekparents.com and like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Thanks, guys.